Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. Are you anointed, appointed, ready to go? Are you armed and dangerous? Or are you a wimp? Come on, say it. What are you? You're armed and dangerous. We don't want no wimps. But we are in for training for raining. Amen. Welcome to, what's today? Tuesday. Tuesday night training session. Getting ready to battle because there's a war going on. We were born in the war. Amen. Boy, does the enemy regret allowing us to live. He tried, though. <laughs> he tried very hard. <laughs> Praise God. What a time and season to be alive. Amen. You know, I just want to encourage everyone because it's pretty amazing what's going on right now and all of this plagues and pestilence and all of this lies and deception and delusion and confusion and everything that else is going on. And if you are sick, stay home. It's real simple. Get rid of the flu, no problem. Amen? It's a stinking flu. Amen? And, and, and so in it, you know, you just do the same thing. But if you're not sick... You know, one of the worst things that can happen to an individual is isolation. That's when the enemy starts eating people up, especially an addict or ex-addict. Isolation is very dangerous to them. You know, it's pretty amazing that they've quarantined all these places, but yet you can have booze delivered to your house. I mean, what the stink? Why don't they stop that? You know how many people are overdosing? Because it is quarantine. Think about it. How many people are becoming an addict because of the quarantine? See, they didn't think about any of that. I mean, people are still delivering dope to houses and everything else. People are partying and whatever. Nothing's changed in that arena. But isolation is very dangerous to individuals that are trying to come out of addiction also. Amen? But I'm telling you, there's going to be an increase of addiction because of this isolation. But see, they don't see that. Oh, hallelujah. So there's an area where you and I got to go the extra mile right now because we got to stand in a gap for those that can't. Amen? Listen, if you're not working and you live on the campus, get your butt into prayer. What the heck? You don't need to spend all day on YouTube and blue tube and whatever tube. You want to do something for the kingdom? Get into prayer. We need prayer now. We need warriors. Amen? And if you want, get a bunch of those prayer booklets and go hang out on the corner and arm somebody. Amen? You can put gloves on to, you know. <laughs> and then you can wear a hat that says, W-T-Y-T. Who told you that you were sick? Who told you that you were afraid? Who told you that? Then lay hands on him, cast out the devil, and watch him get healed. Praise God. Who told you that? Hello? Who told you that? This is what's going around. Everybody's listening to the government instead of Jesus. It's incredible to me. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53. Glory. Who told you to stay home? Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, verse 1. You know, in this battle right now, it's the first verse says, who has believed our report? In other words, who's believing our report? That's why we got to do whatever it takes. Who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness 
and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs, he has carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. You're, he was wounded for our acts of evilness, of wickedness, of ungodliness. He was bruised for our iniquities, the curses that we brought upon ourselves and our family lines. He was the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. And we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. He opened not his mouth. Let me repeat that again. He opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. Now you know he's talking about Jesus, right? For the transgression of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked. But with the rich at his death because he had done no violence. Nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased God to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make, look at this. When you made, make his soul as a what? Offering for our sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his land. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, by right, my righteous servant shall justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. For, and he bore the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. Who's going to believe our report of Jesus? This is what's happening. Who's going to believe the report of the way, the truth, and life in Christ Jesus? The true new life that he's the only one that can give new life. He's the only one that can wash us from our sins. He's the only one that can heal. He's the only one. Unfortunately, man is running to man instead of man running to God. And it's pretty amazing because even right now, the powers of darkness have closed churches so man can't run to God. Amen? But thank God for His mercies and grace. Psalm 32. Or just a bunch of ex-drug addicts and maniacs have gathered together. <laughs> We're trained. Why? Because we don't want to be isolated. Oh, glory. Training for reigning. Psalm 32. Let's speak it together. Verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Now, what's a transgression? Well, sin is the presence of evil. When the voice of evil speaks and you agree with it and commit the act, that's called a transgression. When you commit the act, an iniquity comes, which is a curse that comes to you and your family line. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is a man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and whose spirit there is no deceit. In other words, he's repented. Amen. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. 
I acknowledge my sin, my association with evil to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my acts of sin or transgression to the Lord, not to a saint. Hello? It's amazing how many people are still praying to dead. The dead. It's called necromancy, and it brings a curse on a person. They don't even know. They're still praying a rosary, which brings a curse on a person, and they still don't know it. Of course, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I said, oh, confess my transgressions to the Lord. Amen? And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in the flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble, and you shall surround me with what? Songs of what? Deliverance. Praise God. Deliverance. It's an opportunity to get delivered. How? Songs, singing. Yes. That's why some people never get delivered. They can't sing to the Lord. They can't humble themselves because they're too full of pride. He said, look at when you do this, when you begin to worship me, when you acknowledge me, and these songs of deliverance come up, there's something I'm going to do for you. He answers it right here in verse 8. He says, I'm going to instruct you. I'm going to teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. In other words, the voice of the anointing is going to come. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with a bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many saddles will be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Blessed are those whose transgressions have been forgiven. Why? Because they've humbled themselves in repentance. Songs of deliverance <laughs> to drive out evil presence and bring in the... See, it's our responsibility to exchange the presence. You can speak it. Amen. Lord, I exchange my presence for your presence. But then there's an area where the anointing of the presence comes. And that comes in worship. The Father searches those who will worship him in truth and spirit. In his presence, again, the exchange. He says he'll instruct us, he'll guide us into all truth by the spirit of truth known as the Holy Spirit. One of the things that, you know, all sin, transgressions, and iniquity open doors to evil. Listen, if you've, Everybody's been an addict of some sort. What's addiction? It's an overwhelming desire, which is called lust. So lust is addiction. That's all it is. It's the same thing. But people always look at the drugs as being addicted. Pornography. People are addicted to working. Amen? There's a lot of people, they're addicted to themselves. Heck, they can't move that mirror away from them. Addiction. One of the things that opens the door back to addiction is sin. Sin. You know, people don't realize, I, I, I've run into many people. I haven't seen people in years, and I'll run them at the store, and they're outside huffing a cigarette. They say, yeah, man, I've been clean for 20-some years. I said, no, you're not. You're still using. You're still smoking. You're using. Anything else that's bringing you fulfillment Instead of God's presence, it's called an idol. People smoke. They got their cheeks are out like this, like they got another head on their head, filled with what a dip. Dip brings dope. Dippy dopey. Again, addictive influence. Once that's why when people fall into fornication, they usually fall into addiction again. When they decide to have their sex changed, they fall into addiction again. Bisexuals, they fall into addiction again. Why? Because it's an open door to sin. Not only that, is who you vote for and promote, if they're promoters of an evil agenda, that is also sin. 
And people wonder why they're struggling out there, calling themselves Christians when they're promoting Satan's agenda, which is wrong. Hallelujah. James chapter 1. So today in Facebook, I haven't really followed and let people fight on there for a while first. <laughs> I, I, I posted uh, every Democratic led governor or leader of any uh, state, county, city. is a promoter of destruction to America, Americans, and Christ's agenda. They are destructive individuals to all of those. Why? Because what influences them is evil. And until people realize that, they're still asleep. That's why there's a great awakening. They are promoters of destructive and corruption. Does everybody understand it? Listen, many of them are getting busted. They're fighting for their life right now because of their involvement of corruption and destruction, child smuggling, drug smuggling, and everything else. They are fighting for their life. They're doing everything that they can because they're about to get shut down. There's over 150,000 sealed indictments. That's a lot. Globally. This is not just, listen, this is everything. Remember we talked about the other day about um, we're in a dispensational, it's a, it's a season, it's a dispensational season, meaning it's a global event. It's not just a personal event. It's a global event. God is crushing pride in the body and rebellion in the world. He's crushing it. And some people ain't going to, they can't take it. Because they're so full of pride, they run, or they're not willing to do whatever it takes. And because they're, not, they're running to the world instead of to the presence of God, they go back to addiction again. They go back to lust. They go back to fear. They go back to worldly medications. James 1.12. Everybody okay? Well, you're still here. Do we need to lock the door? Hallelujah. Who told you that? Glory. Verse 12. Blessed is a man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires or lust, and then when enticed. Then when desire or, or lust has conceived, it gives birth to what? The presence of evil, which is sin, and then sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Enticed. Enticed to agree or cooperate with evil presence influence. Their presence is always trying to influence me and you. We see it tremendously right now. I mean, 24-7, man. Everywhere. I'm so tired of coronavirus. Sheesh. Almost makes you want to go out and buy a six-pack of Pepsi. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know how many people are buying corona right now? I'm telling you. <laughs> the beer. In fact, I saw people, Christians, walking around promoting it. They're walking around with a beer in their hand. Yeah, this is a good time to be with family. It's a good time to get deliverance. 
promoting drinking beer, call yourself a Christian? Hallelujah. Entice to agree on or cooperate with evil presence, that evil influence. What? To commit an act known as an evil transgression, opening the door to the soul. I want to share something what I saw. I saw a door. Jesus is known as the way, the truth, and the life. He's known as the door, right? People were passing the door. Couldn't see the door because of the great deception. And people who started to go towards the door, the enemy crushed. Couldn't get to it. Many people, or some people were on the other side of the door were coming back out. This is what's happening right now. Some people are not even able to reach the door. What is it? It's called the door of escape. That's what grace is. Grace is the plan. So we're going to say grace to escape tonight. Okay? Everyone say grace to escape. Remember, grace is not God's unmerited favor. Grace is God's plan to escape. Hallelujah. And so this here, the enemy is opening the doors to the soul, which is the mind, will, emotions, and imaginations connected to desirable loss of selfish indulgence of unclean, harmful things. Any agreement of God, any ungodly evil works opens a door to destruction and shuts the door to escape. If you open the door to the enemy, the door of escape shuts. Psalm 36. Hallelujah. Psalm 36, starting at verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is what? There is what? No fear of God before his eyes. In other words, the Lord is not before him. There's no fear of God. Look at how many things people do, and you can sense there's no fear of God. People say whatever they want to say, curse, whatever. No fear of God, no reverence. It says in verse 2, for he flatters himself in his own eyes. When he finds out his iniquity... And when he hates, the words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. So he was wise at one time and doing good. Obviously, opened the door. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. He does not abhor evil. There's no fear. See, there's no fear of death. There's no fear of hell. There's no fear of consequences. And because of this, their conscience is seared. Does everybody get this? Their conscience is seared. Man, when you're involved in the addiction, when you're an, an addict out there doing what you're not supposed to be doing, there's certain levels of addiction. There's a level of addiction where a person will do whatever it takes to feed that demon in them, even murder. Then there's people who will steal. Then there's people who, who won't do either one. But it depends on the level of the addiction and how deep they're in, how many demons they have. But only the Lord can rescue them. They can go to a 12-step and get, try and manage it, but you usually go back. I can tell you many people who have been in 12 steps and come out and found the Lord, you know. Or they're still in the 12 steps, rescuing people that are in it who have found the Lord. But there's only one step. That's in his presence. Amen? That's in his presence. And that's the one thing. We don't want to go back into management. We want to stay in a place of freedom. We have to manage enough stuff. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Grace to escape.
We need grace to escape. What's grace? God's plan of escape. First Timothy 4. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Glory. Where are you? Let's speak it. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, we know we're in the latter times, the Spirit is expressly saying, listen, many are going to depart from the faith. They're going to fall away. They're still going to call themselves Christians, but they're not going to follow. Giving heed to doc, deceiving spirits, which is also known as a familiar spirit. And doctrines of demons, which we see promoted all the time. You turn on CNN and SNBC, ABC, BBC, the view, that's all doctrines of demons. That's all they're doing is promoting antichrist agendas. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Wow. So we see the seared conscience, not able to reach the door of escape. Does everybody understand it? This is so vital right now. This is a part of the harvest that's going on. You know, it, it, as God is crushing pride in the body and rebellion in the world. And the enemy's trying to destroy as many as he can. But there's a divine interruption right now. He put Trump in office. That was a divine interruption. Amen? He's turning over seats of corruption and destruction. This is a divine interruption. God is trying to prepare his people. Why? Because he's coming soon. His return is soon. We are in a time of plenty. And then we will reach a time of famine. And that will be tribulation. But we are coming to the end of the beginning of birth pangs or the, what we call the beginning of sorrows. And get, begin. You know, when we enter tribulation, most people won't even know it. They won't even know it. They won't, they won't recognize it. Does everybody understand that? They won't recognize it so much. But you and I will recognize it. Why? Because we'll see a treaty be signed. We'll see peace in Jerusalem and Israel. We'll know these things. Because even when you try and tell people now what's going on, they don't know, you know. It isn't until something dramatically, even the plague's not enough for them. They need a Budweiser plague, I guess, instead of a Corona. I don't know. I don't know where they got that from. It's Bud Stupid, you know. But many people are not, it, it's got to be something dramatic for them to awaken you know maybe when they can't pay their rent i don't know oh god help you know hallelujah there he is he's ready second corinthians chapter six because of the seared conscience many are not able to reach the door of escape they're not able to fall into the plan of escape. Second Corinthians 6, verse 11. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own desires, affections, emotions. 
Now in return for the same I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. Why? It's an open door. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? It's an open door. And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement is the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God and they shall be my people if they do something. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch what is unclean. You know, many, the, the, one of the problems is many people don't understand what unclean is. Anything that God doesn't approve of is unclean. It's that simple. There are certain books that are unclean. And it doesn't have to be penthouse or anything else. It can be something that is in there that is a lie. Every lie is unclean. There are certain clothes that are unclean. And it's not because they haven't been washed. There are cursed items are unclean. Cigarettes are unclean. Tobacco is unclean. Liquor is unclean. I can't tell you how many houses I've gone into proclaiming to be Christians, and they got a whole bar set up. You know why? Really no connection. Really no connection. There's no fear of God. They believe that you're a Christian. They go to church. They tithe. They're good people. I can do this. I'm all right. God knows my heart. Yes, he does it. He's trying to expose it. That's what this is going on right now. God is exposing the hearts of his own people. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you. Hello. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Touching nothing unclean. Why? Because it opens a door to ungodly desires again, addictive desires again. People begin to have old dreams again. Of using. All of these things begin to overcome them. I'm not saying you won't get attacked every once in a while. But they're battling going back to drinking. They're battling in them. They want to go back and get that cigarette. They want to go back and see this person they used to lust with. They want to call all of these. Anything that brings you to the past ain't God. Well, God knows my heart where you're an idiot. Just plain and stupid. <laughs> Anything that try, the enemy tries to reconnect you to your past. Why? God can bring anything to you. It's almost like turning your back on God when you go to your past. You know why? No fear. No reverence. What does the word say? Anything you start to build on in your past is an abomination. God is doing a new thing. He's trying to, he says, who, he who's in Christ is a new creation. Old things pass away. All, all things have become what? New. New. Oh, hallelujah. Touch nothing unclean opens the door to addictive desires again, sickness, disease, and bondage. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We have entered a global reset. And only God could push the button for reset. Verse 20. One. <laughs> Verse 21. Is everybody there? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, and we've spoken this multiple times. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from his past. Wow. You know, there are people that still have not cleansed themselves in their past. They're still connected to so many things in their past that is unclean. It brings torment. 
It says, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from his past, he will be a vessel for what? Honor. Why? Because he's a vessel from the future now. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. It says, flee also youthful lust. Well, weren't those from your past? But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. Associations bring impartations. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate what? Strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach. Able to what? Teach. Patience. That's endurance. In humility, not in pride. Correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses or get their conscience reconnected. And escaped the snare of the devil, having been taken captive to do his will. That's what we see right now. Many people are still in captivity doing the will of the devil, not even knowing it. Believe me, he doesn't come up to you and say, hi, I'm going to do this to you today. He doesn't write you a letter and, you know, warn you that, you know, you're going to get attacked this way. God will warn you, though. God is always training me and you. He's going to turn everything that you're going through to the good. If as long as you keep him before you, you maintain a humble spirit and repent. Amen. And live from the future. You trust him, not you. Hallelujah. It, so we need, see here that we, uh, uh, the conscience must be restored so that the person can regain the senses to reach the door of escape. If the conscience is still severed, the senses are not restored, and they think they're okay. They're still promoting and voting for the things that are displeasing to God. And John 10. We're going to get to a point we're going to open the door and drag people in. John chapter 10. Get in. Remember what happened when the door finally shut at Noah's time? <laughs> they were laughing and everything. and <laughs> They didn't think they were going to get killed. They didn't think it was going to rain. They probably didn't know what the heck it was anyways. He saw this huge hotel being built. But it took on animals. <laughs> a hotel for animals but all those that were servants of darkness and evil and wicked constantly when that door shut then they saw you know I don't know if any of them knew how to swim I don't know but they freaked out when the water started going over their head and they started climbing up trees, started climbing up mountains, and they couldn't climb up any further. I'm sure some of them probably grabbed some logs and whatever, held onto it for a while. But when you're a giant, you need too many things that can cause it help you float. And they all died. And then their spirits became demons. And that's what we battle today. Amen? Disembodied spirits. John 10, 10. No, John 10, 1. Sorry. John 10, verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, the same is as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the what? The door is the shepherd of the sheep. And to him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of a stranger. 
Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of escape <laughs> of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out in and out and find pasture. But the thief does not come except for what? Steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Wow. He is the door to the sheep, the plan of escape. Amen? He is the plan to escape. Psalm 51. Again, again, we have entered a global reset. We are in, in a dispensational season. And all things are being made new. Psalm 51. So we don't want to be misled. We want to be led. Again, without God's presence, you can, you, we can't do nothing. Is everybody there? Here's a powerful prayer. It's a prayer for rescue. Let's speak it. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my what? Transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in inward parts. And in the hardened parts, you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. What a prayer. What a prayer. This is a humble prayer. He's expressed his sins, transgressions, and iniquities, everything before God. He humbled himself. It takes humbleness to repent. See, many people just repent out of their heads and not out of their heart. There's a difference. Many people worship out of their heads and not out of their heart. There's a difference. Remember, the heart is the core of all your desires. Proverbs 6. Grace to escape. Proverbs 6. Everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. In verse 16. Let's speak it. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. What's the first one? A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. How about abortion? Is that innocent blood? Yeah. Man, these doctors and nurses that are doing this. Can you imagine them when I stand before the Lord if they don't repent? What about all the people that promote it? 
But all the people that voted, there's blood all over their hands. Verse 18. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift and running to evil. A false witness who speaks lies. And anyone who sows discord among brethren. These are seven things that God says these are an abomination to him. They should be looked at, understood. Amen. What are these going to do? They're going to prevent an individual from reaching the door. First John chapter 4. First John 4. In verse 1, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? What's the first verse? Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. In other words, who told you that? Amen? Who told you that? That's how you test the spirit. Who told me that? Where did it come from? Why do I have, why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? Check it out. Where did it come from? What's my motive? What's my intent? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I pleasing God? Am I going the extra mile? Am I humble? Am I prideful? Self-examination. Have I been submissive? Or am I a grumble or complainer? That's pride. See, all of these things, you're either prideful or humble, no matter what it is. And God rejects the proud. That means a way of escape. He says, I give grace the way of escape to the humble, not to the prideful. Who told you that? Ooh. Test the spirits. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, we know, we who know God. He who knows God hears us. Again, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. Wow. Think about that. You know, I, I've, Facebook, I've tried to reach many people. And even the deceived that were Christians and have fallen from faith. Try to speak to them. Share with them. The other, yesterday, Lord said, block them. Time's up. Block them. I said, whoa. Time's up. See ya. Block anything on my Facebook, he said. That is not approving what I approve of. Block them. Time's up. They're in my hands now. Kind of like, whoa. Is everybody okay? Test the spirits. Verse 5 again. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of what? Error. Spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Wow. Test the spirits. What is the voice of influence? Where is it coming from? Who told me that? Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5. 
verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. In other words, align your identity with him. And walk in love as Christ also loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Now that is powerful. What a warning. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them or promoters with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, not deception. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Rather what? Expose them. Heck, if you're not willing to expose yourself, how can you expose anything else? More people are trying to pull the national grand force out of somebody else's eye and leaving the tree trunk in their own. And they can't see correctly. Verse 12, For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you work circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? The days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Wow. See, he's saying, awake the sleepers to the voice of the anointing. Aligning your identity with Christ as a joint heir. The plan to escape, grace to escape. In the dispensational season, a reset, divine interruption <laughs> is to settle for some people so that hopefully they will be able to see. Because the world has them so busy moving. There's a lot of people who had to stop. They're trying to busy themselves. Not really seeing what's happening being led by all fake, lying deception. The Holy Spirit is trying to draw them to that Bible on the shelf that's got a lot of dust. Trying to draw them to someone who said some, something to them a while ago. Man, don't, what about Jesus? Holy Spirit saying, what about Jesus now to many of them? What about Jesus? Who told you that? And I'm going to close at Ephesians 2. Is this how you want to live your life? How about a new life? Would you like to wake up in hell? Hallelujah. Ephesians 2. Again, I'll, I'll never forget when I was out there messed up. And these two spirits were up in the corner. I couldn't tell who they were or what was what. But they were not uh, evil. I believe they were two angels. And they were talking to each other. And when they were talking to each other, they were saying, look what he's doing with his life. And they were discussing my life. I'm trying to catch a buzz. And they, over on the side, these, there were two presents. They were talking to each other saying, look what he's doing with his life. And it, be, it, it affected me. I thought, gosh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to live this way anymore. 
And then when the Lord spoke to me, I didn't know it was him with that voice inside of me. He said, God, do you want a new life? you want to get off of drugs and alcohol? See, wanting to get off of something, to be free from it, doesn't work. You've got to want a new life. If you're not willing to get a new life, you're not going to be free. You've got to walk away from the old into the new. And I knew what that meant. It meant I had to give everything up. But I'd really have a new life than the one I was living. Even though I had loved ones and everything else. But God can do anything. Amen? He can restore what needs to be restored. And he can keep loose what he needs to be loose. And then even some of the things that, some of the things that were restored, I had to cut loose. To give them up. I'll take care of it. Just pray for them. Make sure they make it home. Ephesians 2, verse 1. It says, in you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. By his plan, you've been saved. Amen? And he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by his plan, by grace, you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them as a witness, as a sign, and as a wonder. Amen? Grace to escape. There is the grace. It's a door. Jesus is grace. He is the plan. He is the door. He's the way out. Many people haven't made it to the door yet. They're trying, but the enemy keeps knocking them out, preventing them from getting there. And some people have walked out of that room, out of that door, and walked away. They've sold their birthright, like Esau did, for worldly pleasures and lust, not knowing the torment and torture, what awaits them. But I can tell you there's a tremendous harvest going on right now in the crushing in every area. But we don't want to get caught up in the world and with the fears and everything else that's going on there. Again, it's a time to go the extra mile. It's a time to do whatever it takes. It's a time to trust. It's not a time to fear. We are in a reset and a transition. We'll get to the other side. God's going to make a way. No matter what, we will become prosperous. There's going to be such a shift in everything. Holy shift. Amen? Praise God. Well, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to protect the seed that's been imparted and bring encouragement to your people with reality, aligning our identity up with the identity of Christ as joint heirs, overcomers of the world and temptations. Shutting the doors, Lord, that are not of you. And opening the doors that are of you. And let us be one arm and one spirit, one truth, with one Father, one Lord, as a sword of your spirit in this realm, that we may cut loose those who've been taken captive and drag them in through the door, Lord, into your glory, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.